Bonjour! Bonjour. We're Bonjour. We just went to Cannes, France, and the purpose of this travel guide is to help you navigate this beautiful city's cinematic croissant lace streets as diligently as possible. We went to rep our short film, Me and You, which was selected for a screening at the Festival de Cannes! Not like Soda Can Can. Like the Cannes Film Festival, one of the most prestigious film festivals in the world. R-E, very important. It's not pronounced Can or Cane or Cannes. That's a sure way to get spit in your croissant. First things first, we converted our dollars into euros, which is like Monopoly money and made it way more fun to spend. Which ended up being a problem like a third of the way into our nine day trip. Thankfully, Bank of America ATMs are abound abroad. We recommend downloading the French app so you can learn some basic phrases beyond bonjour and merci. So obvious. We were able to score an Airbnb just a couple blocks away from the Palais des Festivals, which is where all the action happens. Luckily, I'm a great producer and found the perfect place with my logistical skills. Only 1100 for nine days? That's unheard of. You are a great producer, and I'm a great filmmaker. Just look at these shots of our little French Riviera flat. It was on the top floor right under the steepled roof, which made the quarters a bit cramped, but gave it such character. Morning, honey. Morning. Day one. Day one. We just have to go pick up our badges. I'm excited. I think you need another five minutes. Enough of my bleary-eyed face. Let's go out and hit the town. <laughs> France is crazy, oh my god, we're here, it's nuts. Um, Jordan and I just checked in and we got our badges. We have tickets for the red carpet screens every single day and we have to kind of figure out which one we want to go to. We just saw our film in the catalog. We have our screening on Friday, which is going to be super exciting. Oh! <laughs> I don't even know what to say to people. Yeah, I'm like, I just make vowels. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I thought that. <laughs> Before we get too distracted by the architecture and pharmacies that look a lot like California dispensaries, <laughs> more on that later, let's head to the mothership of all screening venues, the Palais Day Festival. The festival is structured in a caste system of importance, kind of like Mean Girls, but not as judgmental. It's all color-coded by badges, which give you different access privileges to screenings and events. You have your mustard yellow badges, which are for short film corner filmmakers. That's us. We're unfortunately at the bottom of the film food chain, but that didn't stop us from getting into practically every party and screening. You gotta rub shoulders, yo! Next, you have your staff, who are the security guards who let people in and make sure they're not bringing anything dangerous to the festival. Some of the staff seemed Frenchly frigid until we asked if we could film them for our documentary. Just look at those her child smiles. They drove these super sleek and intimidating black cars called the Renaults. Which apparently manufactures everything from these sexy security cars to dump trucks. Climbing on up the ladder, literally, are the press. There's an entire area at the head of the red carpet for photographers to stake out a spot for their personally bought ladders and fight for that perfect telephoto shot of celebs on the carpet. Like this guy, talk about dedication. Get that JPEG. And finally, the reason this whole cinematic monolith is set in motion, the distributors. They watch the world premieres of these mostly independent films and say you can or can't find a market for them. Especially with the advent of online streaming sites like Netflix, Hulu Plus, and Amazon Play, who just created a subsidiary called Amazon Films, which had four features in the competition this year. All right, real quick. Every film selected for competition vies for one thing. Can I get a drum roll? The highest cinematic honor, the holy grail of narrative filmmaking, the Palme d'Or. Some say it's better than the Oscar. If your badge doesn't allow you access to screenings at the Grand Lumiere, which is where all the films in competition have their world premiere, you can do one of two things. One, wait in a hella long line to receive an invitation like these people have been doing since the crack of dawn. Or two, literally beg for one with a sign to get one from someone who has extras like these people. Oh, that's cute. I'd give one to him. That's what an invitation looks like, by the way. Very tempted to snatch it. No, we don't want bad can karma. Good news. You can avoid the long lines and groveling by catching the same film the day after it premieres. This theater, which is just around the river bend from the Grand Lumiere is called Saye Soxe. Sa 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 Why don't we ask these security guards? Can we ask you a quick question for sure. a documentary? No, 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 no questions. Sale du Soy Lamente? The cinema movie, Soy Santiam. It's just a name. Sale Santiam. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. It looks so much. Looks it's just like name. It's just just name. Soul, yeah. so okay. Our film, Me and You, screened in a little distributor's theater inside the Palais, which was adorable. Aw, look at us at our screening. So cute. Love that purple. The films we saw at this year's festival were Hell or High Water. Fun fact, the star, Chris Pine, was on our flight to Cannes, and we were totally pining for him. <laughs> Ma Rosa. Gok Sang. And last, but not at all least, The, the Neon, Neon Demon. Demon. 
This thriller starring Elle Fanny knocked our blue and pink socks right off! It's a metaphysical tour de force exploring the venomous world of vanity set against LA's young model scene. Oh, well said. Merci. Another fun fact, Elle Fanning was on our flight back to LA. I was fanning myself the whole way home. Oh, God. Instead of my viruses going away in France, they became French. <laughs> Right along the water, just yards from the Palais, is a collection of white tents called the Village International, where basically every country in the world has converged to vie for your filmmaking eye. Basically, they want you to shoot your next film in their country. One day we'll walk in and declare hegemony on one. I say Australia. Hey, Jor, hegemony means you want to claim dictatorship over a country? What a dark meaning for such a cute word. Anyway, let's hit those cobblestone streets again. You should probably know that pretty much every French native here smokes. No judgment here, folks, just the facts. Fashion is everywhere. I have got my French Trace Chic outfit on today. Check it out, it's super like yacht, and everyone in France wears blouses. Blouse, I don't know what that means. It's like fun. It and works. You can like unbutton it a little bit if you want. You, you can just be show seductive. the. Trace Chic. Trace France certainly has its slew of American celebrity sweethearts, notably Charlize Theron, whose Dior ad is literally all over the place. Oh, can you say slay? And Julia Roberts. According to this barefooted goddess, you should have three croissants a day. I've been making her proud. Yeah, you have. Julia, you are wise. The Vespa game is strong here. Would you look at this endless row of sexy motorbikes? Vespa is such a popular mode of travel that they even have their own stoplights. It's like a Lego town. The food here is just beyond words. And during the festival, most restaurants within a generous radius of the Palais have non-stop service, which means they're open 24-7 and require serious self-discipline on our part. Or not. This old couple just walked by me, looked down at what I was eating and said, bon appetit. <laughs> our number one breakfast spot, this bakery right here, which is reminiscent of Panera Bread, but about 333 times better. Look, they even have the festival laurel woven discreetly into their logo. That sly grain bundle. Look, Bo, my name is everywhere. Jor, 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 Jor. <laughs> That's not fair. Why is everything about you here? Jor means today, and I consider myself a pretty in the moment gal, so thanks, Mom and Dad. As we mentioned earlier, the CVS equivalents here are a little more than reminiscent of California dispensaries, which initially made finding a place to buy sunscreen hard to find. But by the time we finally bought sunscreen, we were already burned. <laughs> Get this, every store in France, and I mean every store, whether it's a new age crystal shop or a pizza place, closes down for two hours in the middle of the day just to go on lunch break. Why is Marika so militant? And last but not least, France sees McDonald's for what it really is, poison. No, Jor, that's poisson. It means fish. Oh, fine, I like the other way better. We learned that tidbit from our French tour guides who are both incredibly versed in the culture. We kind of rooted for them to be together the whole time, but you can give up on that one, folks. They're just friends. Speaking of fish, let's head on down to the little bay of yachts, just north of the play. Nice segue. Or should I say Vespa? <laughs> you sound like a dying seal. I don't want to help it at all. I want it to die. <laughs> Yacht space here is astronomically expensive, so you better believe every one of these chariots is the aquatic home of someone big. A BFG, shall we say. A big <laughs> giant. We couldn't help but look on whimsically from the shore. Oh, I hope that photo turns out nice. But alas, one day we'll have our own with a big bonjour flag flying high. These docks are popular sites for matinee screening soirees and celebrity photo shoots for official can press releases. This divinely gleaming dock is where we saw Chris Pine for the second time. Oh, actually the third during our trip, having an official press release photo shoot. After slipping past this nice security lady. Oh, if only she knew we were about to betray her. And introducing our favorite spot in Cannes. Old Town! Just north of the bay, this network of quaint cobblestone streets features some of the best, oh look, there's my name again, best brunches in town. And lots of shops where you can get cheap touristy stuff for your beloveds. And mussels. We never had mussels, Bo. I break out into hives when we eat those. No, not those. I'm talking about the hot French boy right there. You would. Oh yeah. Yeah, and the architecture enticed us to do some serious slaying. Oh, yeah. Slay. Oh, I'm in France. When in Rome. I mean, France. <laughs> Your shots are way better than mine. Yeah, they are better. The woes of being a good videographer. No one can mimic my beauty. Up and up and up we go! All the way to the Castre. Where do you get castrated? Just kidding. It's an iconic French fortress that presides over the Cannes coastline, like Hogwarts. Um, that looks nothing like Hogwarts. That's like maybe a rectangular version of the Astronomy Tower. Oh, pardon my ignorant metaphor since I've actually never seen Harry Potter. But isn't it so cool? Yes! Except for the fact 
fact that it was closed for a wedding the first time we showed up on its stone steps and were turned away by a French guard who bore a striking resemblance to Jane Lynch. We ended up getting over it and went back the next day only to discover. We can't get into this museum right now because they're closed for lunch. It's a very common thing apparently. Everyone goes on lunch here, which Everyone. I kind of think is cool. We do admire their sanity. Fortunately, they opened about 15 minutes after this video and we went on the official Musée de Castre tour, which featured historical French relics, all castrated. <laughs> Jora, that statue looks like you at the beginning of your croissant binging. Um, my boobs do not look that asymmetrical. That's just the weird overhead lighting. Look, Bo, that's what your inner gay French man looks like. Look, Jor, it's you a couple days into your croissant binging. That's rude. And it's you on the other side of your croissant journey. I am not talking to you for the rest of this documentary. Hey, look, Jor, stone steps to the top of the castle. That may have been a route that people clambered up in the 1600s, but there's a much less archaic stairwell over here. I thought you weren't talking to me anymore. Ugh. But yeah, I'll go that way. Couple minutes scamper from the castre, the white sanded, crystal clear waters of the Colt Dias. Ow! Ha! That's what you get for trying to steal my intro. Like I was saying, the white sanded, crystal clear waters of the Colt Dias. Talk about water goals. It looks like someone dumped trillions of gallons of Evian here. Which makes it the perfect spot for the classic water breaking over the feet couple shot. Sometimes I think we're married. And lest us not forget the nightlife. As we mentioned earlier, there are white tents running all along the Cannes coastline, but not all of them are intended to educate you about film locations in other countries. Oh no, some of them are intended for parties. And not just any parties, star-studded, moonlit shoreside bashes with the best your taste buds have ever had the privilege of making contact with! This is the tent in particular, where we partied with such names as Katy Perry, Orlando Bloom, and Vigo Mortensen after the screening of Vigo's new film, Captain Fantastic! La Crosette is the place to be, especially when the sun crossets. It's also a popular place to get besieged by fake paparazzi who stop you to take pictures and con, or should I say can, you into buying them. We had this happen to us quite a few times, not complaining, but honestly, the photos weren't as cute, personal, or even glamorous as our own selfie. <laughs> That is really a brilliant way to make money, though. The ego will spend serious dollars on itself when validated by the idea of fussing paparazzi. On the penultimate day of our trip, we ferried from the Cannes port to a little island on the coastline called St. Marguerite. Even though we were only there for literally just over an hour in order to make the last ferry back for the day, we managed to see the remnants of the world-renowned St. Marguerite prison. The architecture of this prison has been mostly preserved since the 1600s and housed the famous man in the iron mask. I feel like we saw an iron mask somewhere. There! Above that garage in Old Town! Bo, iron masks were very common during the 1600s. I still think it's his. For the last day of our trip, we decided to take a break from the screenings, brunching, and partying can, and explore a neighboring land. And after a quick Google image search, we chose... Monaco! Finding out that despite its 2.4 mile coast length, Monaco is considered a whole country with its own native language, totally blew our minds. Before we get too far into the details, let's just get there. We took a round trip train to Monaco out of the Guerre de Can, which is both a bus and train station just blocks from our Airbnb. That's the same train station we came into when commuting from the Nice airport on the first night of our trip. It was quite Nice. Monaco is just a 45 minute train ride east along the Côte d'Azur, which meant on one side, 45 minutes of blissful Mediterranean ocean views. And on the other side, 45 minutes of some pretty intense graffiti. What an inspired tagger. I feel like we just stepped into a James Bond film. We did, and many others. Monaco is the backdrop of hundreds and hundreds of Hollywood blockbusters. Basically any movie where spies engage in reckless high-speed chases through the Alps and femme fatales sip on champagne while staring seductively through clouds of smoke in fancy casinos. <laughs> wow, I'm amazed you had enough breath for that. <sighs> Merci. As we learned, folks, everyone here travels either by Vespa or extravagant sports car. But more emphasis on extravagant sports car, because Monaco is home to the world famous Grand Prix. Did you know that one out of 10 racers die every year in an auto battle? That is a false statistic. Monaco is also known for its glamorous Arts Nouveau casinos, statues, and an endless string of fashion boutiques. All 
also Larvado Beach, which was our first experience of a nude beach. That's why we kept the shots here super wide and focused on pebbles. Well, that about concludes our can documentary. It's in the can, honey. Now it's time for a dramatic closing montage featuring all of the previously shown footage to give it a sense of teary-eyed finality. If there's anything we've learned at the Cannes Film Festival, it is that cinema is woven into the tapestry of life in this city. And that the honest, artistic depiction of the human experience is an inseparable part of the French culture. We feel right at home among these sacred storytellers and blunt croissant cravers. It's a magical place to say the least, and we'll be back. Au revoir, France Lay! <laughs> Where should we go next, so honey? Hot. Greece. 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 Australia. Australia? Yeah. Ireland. Oh, oh Iceland. My God. Iceland is a misnomer because it's bad. green. It's huge. What does that mean? It's big. Did you know that Russia is huge? Russia, I can see it from my house. You can put like 10 Americas in Russia. I know. Maybe we could go to like, the, oh, Ibiza, where we can take a pill. I took a pill in Ibiza. <laughs> and then we'll show Avicii what cool. Let's do Greece. Greece. Wait, wait, let's check into our timeshare and see where they can let us go. Yeah. Because yeah, we yeah. may be able to go there for free. We'll be back. In the coming months. We got traveling to do. Bye. <laughs>